turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2. I'll read from verse 18. And I went out by night, talking about Nehemiah, by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung pot, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up at the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth west, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that, they, that we be no more a reproach. And I want to use for a subject, speaking briefly, who will build or who will rebuild the broken walls? When the walls of Jericho fell down, it was God's people that entered Jericho. But when the walls of Jerusalem fell down, it was the enemy that entered Jerusalem and plundered God's people. However, after 70 years in exile, the Jews had returned home to find Jerusalem, the once great capital of the promised land, a depressing rubble with broken walls. In about 70 BC, as a result of the Roman siege during the first Jewish-Roman war, the walls were almost completely destroyed. Jerusalem would remain in ruins for some six decades without protective walls. What is the critical importance of a wall, a city wall? Because we read that Jeremiah in the book of Lamentations wept over the situation of Jerusalem. And likewise, Nehemiah wept concerning Jerusalem especially when he reflected on the condition of the walls. Symbolically, biblical walls remind us of protection, hope, and the glory of God. Whenever you have a dream of being in a place without a wall, it shows that you are not guarded, you are not safe from the enemy and the powers of evil. Walls are important in life. Walls define boundaries. Walls define mutual containment. Boundaries indicate where the enemy cannot cross. It also indicates where you cannot mingle external to the protection of what is inclusive. Boundaries created by walls indicate protection. It indicates safety, symbolizes discipline and order. It also validates designated entrance and exit. 
so that people know the door that they should come in and the door that they should go out and Jesus when he spoke says that he is the door and if any man enters by some other way or tries to climb the wall that he is a thief all of the above benefits that you've just heard has to be deleted if the wall was not there or if the wall was improperly built or if it fell down or if the wall is broken by the enemy when boundaries and walls are broken by the enemy there are a few things that kick in immediately the place can become captured and has citizens enslaved this captivity produces subjugation and it can trickle down even further if i can take it a little bit more the subjugation initiates spiritual control by the enemy when the enemy subjugates god's people he brings in idolatry he converts the people to become them as corrupt as they are because the walls have been violated secondly the subjugation is also political because when the enemy subjugates the people, he enforces a spiritual alliance to itself. If you remember in the Gospels that Pilate, concerning the matter of Jesus, almost got into a problem because he was challenged concerning his allegiance to Caesar, the Roman Emperor. Thirdly, the subjugation also initiates financial obligations to the oppressor. You remember Zacchaeus in the New Testament, how the people hated him and didn't think Jesus should eat with him because he was taking money and taxes from the people and giving it to their Roman oppressors. At a personal level, the loss of a wall can lead to a loss of personal identity this is where your self-esteem becomes just simply self-esteem and for the godly people the people of god the loss of the walls and boundaries creates compromised morals ethics and values because the spirit of the enemy corrupts everything when it enters through the barrier and the walls that were created for their own safety. This is the situation where Jerusalem was. Nehemiah saw the same thing that everyone saw. But the only difference was that Nehemiah took action. Nehemiah came and observed the broken walls. He wept over those walls. He did not only weep. When this came to his attention, he determined as God laid upon his heart to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem. Of everything else that could have bothered him like every other human being, he weeps for the nation. There are people who cry not because someone died, but they cried because God's people are violated. They cry because of social and economic injustice. They cry because of corruption. They cry because of hopelessness in nations that can do better. Nehemiah was determined to rebuild the broken walls. He had to contact the king. And God gave him favor before the king. Favor that became opposed. Because if you read in Nehemiah, in chapter 2, if you read on verse 10, it says, When Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant of the Amorite, heard, heard of it, 
it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. They were grieved, they were shocked that anybody even cares about what's happening. And they opposed because everything that you want to do to the glory of God, if it receives no opposition, then it is not of God. You must expect healthy support as well as healthy opposition. But despite the opposition, Nehemiah brings the restoration. He brings the restoration in three ways. First, physically. He contacts the king. He obtains the permission. The wall is rebuilt. King Artaxerxes granted permission which trickled down to several favors from many to rebuild the city. Despite the vicious oppositions, the walls were rebuilt in a record time of 52 days according to Nehemiah 6 and verse 15. Secondly, Nehemiah also restores economic justice in the land, admonishing the wealthy people against taking advantage of the people that were less fortunate than them. Thirdly, Nehemiah brought restoration spiritually. We see Nehemiah and Ezra bringing a restoration of spiritual revival to Jerusalem. Ezra reads the law of Moses to the people. He brings their heart to a place of rededication to God. It's like he summons those who have departed from Jehovah God to come back to their first love. We see that the work that God used Nehemiah to accomplish has covered the different spectrums of human life. But I want to ask you a question. Do you notice symptoms of broken walls in your life? Are there things that are not the same in your life? Was there a time when God was first? And then you notice how your spiritual life begins to depreciate and degrade to the place of indifference. I would like to advise you that it would be an indication that the enemy has broken through the walls, the walls of God's protection, the walls that safeguard your safety, the walls that gives you assurance that the enemy cannot trespass. And that the weapons of the adversary are out of bounds to your habitation and to your God-ordained territories. Do you notice that your household and your family also experience symptoms of broken walls? We see an increasing dissolution of families. We see a rapid increase in socializations and renaming of the institution of marriage. Where these days a man can marry a man and a woman marries a woman and lately in some nations there are thoughts and proposals to permit women to marry more than one husband. This is an indication that God's wall has been broken. People have no more respect for the sanctity of the family people have no more regard for other human beings there are many who will give better care to their cats and dogs more than they would attend to a fellow human being in a position of need have you noticed the walls crumbling how many of our young ladies may have children but there is no father how many of our would-be fathers are making it a full-time duty to go around from region to region causing pregnancies where they just move to the next region claiming to have a new beginning? It never mentions how that new beginning will affect the child that they abandoned in another place. And of course the mother that is saddled with a child that she was hoping will have a father 
and a mother in a family that is united and in harmony of the love of Jesus Christ. Have you noticed in your own society and in your nation that the walls have been broken down? I would not even dare to mention the legalization of prostitution or the legalization of drugs and alcohol. I would not even mention the logic that is played and the tricks played on the people in a sense that their lives are constantly being derailed and they are laid like a lamb to the slaughter with policies that remove God and places the enemy in its place. Have you noticed in our present global village that the walls of sanity the walls of god's holiness have been swallowed up by empty religion well polished pastors preaching a message that they themselves do not believe in singers singing songs that their life has nothing to do with it People simply marching in and out, attending a place called church, wherein you're supposed to lay down your 50 kilograms of problems only to find out that you walked out with 100 kilograms because the walls have been broken. What about your local church and Christendom? Have you found all of a sudden that the walls of God's righteousness is no longer a popular message to preach in some places? It encourages, it promotes their proclivities. All of a sudden, things that were wrong suddenly become shady. And sin and unrighteousness does not shock people anymore. It doesn't produce a kind of inconvenience anymore. People are now bold in their iniquities because the place that is supposed to build the wall has been compromised. Have you noticed how they advertise things to entice our children? Have you noticed how they show the advertisements of alcohol depicting an unhappy man or woman who suddenly regains his joy when presented with a bottle of Johnny Walker of which he will douse himself in it. And suddenly it doesn't show how it ends. It simply shows that if it was a man, he is suddenly, because he has alcohol, he is suddenly surrounded by half-dressed women. And if he was a woman, he is suddenly chased by these men who desire her attention he never speaks about the broken lives the broken homes the destroyed future the havoc because the walls have been broken but who is Nehemiah? the first thing we notice is that Nehemiah is unselfish Nehemiah does not think about himself Nehemiah does not look at it and say, it's government property. It's not my wall being broken, it belongs to the government. Nehemiah does not abuse things because he can say it's the government. Some nations have leaders who do not care about the people. They hold boxes and bags of money. Suddenly there is no money for education and for other things that the community who elected them should be benefiting from. And when caught, they simply appoint another thief to investigate the first thief. Secondly, Nehemiah was conscientious. Nehemiah could not bear it to join others either to do evil or to overlook what is a violation of fairness and a violation of justice, a violation of the people of God and their spirits. He was conscientious. You could not bribe him, you could not buy him, you could not persuade him to join your evil gang, you could not make him change and turn around and seek to be accepted by evildoers. Thirdly, Nehemiah was God-fearing. 
You see, if you don't have the fear of God, a Bible on a shelf will not give it to you. You need the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. You must have respect for God because every thought, every action, every footstep that you take in life, it is either going to advertise your respect for God or your disrespect for Him. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Most High is understanding. Have you noticed the walls broken when people conduct themselves as if they are not accountable to God and God will do them nothing, neither can He because they will just hide and they will obliterate their tracks and they can get away with it. The Bible says we must not assume the patience of God as his inability to act. Because God who is patient is a righteous judge. I tell you that Jesus came the first time as a sacrificial lamb. But when he comes back, he is coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, both to judge the quick and the dead, both to judge the righteous and the unrighteous. And when he shall return, he shall not come to die on the cross. He shall come to separate the goats from the sheep. He shall come to separate light from darkness. He shall come to separate those that are heaven bound from those that are hell bound. This world belongs to somebody, even though many times it looks Looks like it's no man's land. Nehemiah, fourthly, he sees the same broken walls. You know, there are many people that function in their life like see no evil, hear no evil. They will act like I didn't see it, I didn't hear it. God can be insulted, God can be abused. God can be taken as a servant or as a houseboy. God can be treated as if he is just a prisoner or a slave to our own desires. And you can see it just like Nehemiah saw it. And you can pretend like it's not happening. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. Nehemiah was not like that. Nehemiah saw what they saw. But unlike the rest, he wants the wall fixed. And it's not another person's responsibility. It is a personal choice that Nehemiah made. He chose to act. Look around our society. Look around your life. Look around your family. Look around where you function in the community or in the society. Look around the nation. Look around the global village. Look around the churches. The institutions. The parachurch organizations. Look around people's homes. Look around the way they conduct their life. Look around the homeless children. The father is somewhere else. The mother is a fashion designer. Doesn't want to be disturbed. The child is left to grow up by herself. And afterwards, when we see the ills that this produces, we say, what is this world coming to? Why are our children like that? Well, I'll tell you why. They are like that because their parents are like that. They are like that because they had no compass, no trajectory to guide their lives. What did we expect? The schools are not there to raise our children. The churches are not there to raise our children. God gave that responsibility to a set of people called parents. But no matter how dire the situation looks, God wants to establish his people both physically and spiritually. Well, let me put it in another way. God wants to rebuild the walls. The benefit of the walls for your life is greater than what it does to God. God does not have to rebuild the wall to be God. But you must rebuild the walls and maintain the walls if 
you are interested in maintaining your destiny as a child of God. And finally, I want to ask you, are you today's Nehemiah? Have you seen what everyone sees and it doesn't concern them, but it concerns you? Do you have that heart of God? Do you feel that nudging in your spirit that is not like the government told you, but something in you says, that's not right. This is wrong. This is an abomination. This is ungodly. This is unholy. This is injustice. Do you sense something in you? Have you ever felt like something needs to be done because this is wrong? But then you don't take that second step that Nehemiah took. He placed his name in the column of responsibility, not for his own selfish ends, but for the benefit of the nation. The question remains, who will rebuild the broken walls? All the symptoms around about us in your life, in your households, in your families, in your communities, in your regions, in your nations, wherever you go, you will come across victims of broken walls. They are enslaved by sin, unrighteousness, generational habits that never ceases. But you know what? You can be today's Nehemiah. So that when there is a search, like God says, I looked, I searched the land to see if there is anyone that will stand in the gap. And I found none. That should not be so. Because if you hear that God is searching for someone that can stand in the gap for the people and to reveal the broken walls, God should not say i found no one because you should have both of your hands and ten fingers up in the air saying god i'm here i am here i am going to be the nehemiah of my generation the one who notices and truthfully admits what's wrong and applies themselves to say god make me that Nehemiah, that my society, my community, my family, my nation, and my life desperately needs. Shall we pray? Father, we bless your name. We are so thankful. Can I ask you to stand on your feet and just pray in any language? Talk to God. Tell him, Lord, I'm here. If you are searching for someone to make a difference, I'm here. If you're searching for that person that will rebuild the world, I'm here.